everyone, Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. Today is going to be a little ink swatching video of these three Herban inks. Um, as you can see, I got these inks from my mum and dad. They bought them for me and they actually have come all the way from Korea. Uh, so what's that? Frenchy ink from South Korea, but love it. Um, Posia de Lune, I have wanted ever since I saw Karina Loves to Plan swatch it. Um, it's been on my list for so long. And then Vert Olive and uh, I think I'm pronouncing it Cacao de Brazil, two others that I thought looked really, really beautiful. I'm yet to try any of these inks. I love these little 10 mil bottles, which I actually haven't been able to find in Australia. Um, I really am trying not to buy full bottles of things. I mean, even 10 mil is you know, probably so much at so many refills. So I'm hoping to be able to get some, you know, some ink pens out of this, maybe be able to give one or two samples of part of ink swaps as well. Um, and all in all, just enjoy these beautiful inks and they come in really cute little glass bottles. But let's swatch the ink because I said it was going to be a short video and I'm already rabbiting on. So first up, we're going to go with Possier de Lune. Oh, even just when you open it up. Look at that colour. You'd think, I don't know how many videos I've done now, that I'd like do some sort of like spacing out before I start, but I don't. Got my big cup here. Just want to bring that blotting paper in a little bit. So I tried and I think failed with this thing on the left here. I was trying to look at, trying to think of different creative ways to kind of show what a currently inked for a month could be. Oh, wow, look at that. That is so, so gorgeous. So it's a purpley pink. It's kind of like an eggplant color. Um, I don't know if it's burgundy. It's just gorgeous. Um, it reminds me of also some of those inks that kind of have like wine names. Um, it is just so deep and saturated and beautiful. There's like a warmth to it. It just kind of, I kind of want to simultaneously hug it and put it in a wine glass and like eat it. I hope those descriptions make sense. I'm super excited to see how these really dark patches um, dry as well. Ooh, now let's try and do a writing sample here. And let's get my spelling right, shall I? Little things going that way. Now, I'm pretty sure I saw Karina from Karina Loves to Plan swatch this quite a while ago. But if you haven't seen that video, I highly suggest that you go back and have a look for it. That being said, I just watch all of her swatching videos. She has a really um, great way of. I think describing how inks, um, not just what she sees, but like how they feel and how they are on the page. Um, she also has really lovely handwriting. So to look at, it's really nice. Um, but yeah, I think that's a, a great channel. And I feel like it's silly. I'm sitting here going, you guys should check out this channel, but she's very well known. And I think for good reason, look at those really dark bits in there. Gorgeous. So what I was saying before is I was trying to see if I could do some sort of creative representation of a currently inked and I think I started out okay and then I messed up my spacing um, and it's, yeah, it's just not how I want it to look. Um, I find with, I actually don't consider myself to be a very creative person in like an artistic sense and I get frustrated sometimes because I can have these ideas in my head, like I, I can 
see in my head so clearly how I wanted that to look and I just have a lot of trouble executing it. Um, so I'm still trying to really find a way to be comfortable with my my creativity or artistic side or however you want to, to call it. Um, and part of me actually wants to rip that page out, but I've actually kept it in there to like challenge myself to be okay with the flaws and, and find some good in it. So I'm not there yet because I just have complained about it, but that's the ultimate goal. Now I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get two in. So what I'm going to do, I'll do that one like that and then flip round. So the next color, let's do this one, Cacao de Brazil. This is um, a brown, but as you can see from that little swatch there, it's definitely on the warmer side. Um, a pen friend of mine, I've never really tried brown inks and recently my pen friend Jane um, sent me a couple and I really like them. So I've, I'm just wanting to explore that a little bit more. Um, and I also listened to the Goulet pen cast and have heard Drew Brown go on about browns for so long that it's kind of like, I guess I have to, you know, finally really start exploring and seeing for myself what all the fuss is about. Ooh. Twisty, twisty, twisty. Oh, wow, that is so awesome. That is so up my alley. That is my vibe of ink right there. So do I describe that? I would say that is a light purple brown. It's kind of on like the mauve side of purple. That's the cooler side mixed in with, yeah, some really, but light brown, not going to like a mustard. So not going to a yellow. It's taking what is a quote unquote true brown and diluting it. So it's like a diluted brown with hints of purple and pink around it. And I suspect that this is going to be a really nice shader, which we might not see much of in this nib. Um, but just looking at that, I think that's really, ah, I'm so happy. That's so beautiful. All right, let's do a writing sample here. I'd love to know what your favorite brown is because I definitely am falling in love. I think before I said cacao de Brazil, but it's du. Where? Uh, and again, if you've watched any of my videos, you know, I I kind of have a bugbear of when inks swatch really beautifully, but then you do a writing sample and you can't see anything. And so when inks are on the lighter or less saturated side, side, but then that writing sample still has a punch and is readable to it, um, I'm very happy Sarah, basically. I'm just trying to see. I'm not sure if we're going to get much shading in with that nib but I just think that's such a beautiful color and definitely will be putting it in a pen with a a wetter nib or even like I find my Twisby Go is a fine nib but it's quite a wet pen like I wonder what it would look like in that but that is beautiful so lucky last is Vert Olive and as you can see, it's a green eye. I'm wondering if this is going to be similar to Alt Gold Grun. Um, maybe a little bit darker. We, we shall see. Um, and very randomly, I was actually talking about olives today um, to, I don't know what is going on outside, to my daughter. So I don't know if this story is going to be interesting to anyone. Um, it's, um, I'm Jewish. It's almost Passover. And growing up, um, like when you do that, the service bit at the start of the Passover dinner or the Seder, um, you you don't eat anything until like certain points. But we always had like some of the food like out on the table ready to eat, including some of the um, entree stuff. I'm trying to think of like <laughs> the English and not the Hebrew and Yiddish words. Um, and there we always had, for some reason, we always had bowls of um, just really basic black Spanish olives and it just became a thing that we wouldn't get in trouble if we kind of snuck a few olives um, and 
it's just always been a thing. And like, even to this day as like grown ups, oh, that's not what I was expecting at all. It's gone completely the other way. Anyway, I'll finish the story. As grown ups, we won't touch any other food, but we will still sneak these, you know, in a jar olive. Like they're not fancy at all. They're in a jar, you know, the liquid in it's probably full of salt or sugar to keep it, you know, somewhat preserved. Um, but that's just what we do every every seder. And my my daughter was eating olives today, and this you know, she's almost three, so this is really going to be the first seder she really understands. And I was telling her that, and I'm hoping that's how I'm going to be able to keep her entertained through that first bit of the dinner, um, where we tell the story is just keep feeding her olives. Um, anyway, this I thought this was going to be like a darker like a darker version of Golgrim, but that is just a bright, vibrant ink. And I guess now that I think about it, it kind of reminds me of olive oil, which makes sense. So maybe I was just being silly beforehand. Let's do a writing sample. I'm intrigued to see how this goes down. Wow. So that, it looks a lot greener, I think, in the writing sample compared to the swatch. I'm not sure if that's coming through. I just was, I'm just taken aback. I was not expecting that vibrancy. But that is cool. So I'll bring that up to you here. I think I was pressing a bit hard there. So I think that little bit of feathering was actually me, not the ink. Um, it's green, it's yellow. I don't know if this makes sense, but there's almost like a goldness to it. But really, I can, under, yeah, it's kind of reminding me of especially these lighter bits of olive oil, and it has that kind of slickness to it as well. Again, similar to this, I love that it's a lighter ink, but that the, the sample is um, really legible. That's something I am always on the lookout for um, and completely different to my what I thought it was going to be, and I, and I think also quite different to the swatches I saw, but that's not a bad thing. That's really cool really beautiful ink. So those are the three inks that I got. How about I put them in the right order? Um, uh, from my mum and dad, Posia de Lune, a beautiful, rich and velvety purple, Cacao de Brazil. I'm calling it a, how do you, what's pur purple and brown together? Purple and vert olive, which is a really vibrant, light, punchy, greeny yellow. I think of the three, this one's actually my favourite. I thought that was going to be, but this is just, I don't know, the mutedness or the somewhat dilutedness of it is just really speaking to me. Those are those three there. And looking at how these this shady, you know, these darker bits here are drying, I think is really gorgeous. So I'll do one last close-up for you. There you go. I would love to know what your favourite um, J. Herban ink is. Um, these are so beautiful and I cannot wait to get them into a pen. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, and I don't think I've asked this in a while, but if you could hit like and subscribe, that would be amazing. It really helps me and my channel out. Um, yeah. And I can't wait to chat to you guys all again soon. Bye.